Hi guys, today I'm going to go through the periodic table and how the shell diagrams can help us explain some of the properties that we observe on the shell, so on the periodic table. So the periodic table is a table of all the elements, starting off with hydrogen, helium, and then working our way across like this. Uh, each column is called a group, and we start off with group one, two, three, four. 5, 6, 7, and then group 0 here. And then moving downwards, these are called periods. So this is period 1 here, period 2, period 3, and period 4, etc. Now with each element, as we move across, we gain an extra proton in the nucleus. And because the number of electrons and the number of protons are equal, as we move across, we also gain an extra electron. And the electrons start to fill up shells. Now, uh, in period one, there's just one uh, inner shell. Because it's closer to the nucleus, it can actually only fit a maximum of two electrons. So, he hydrogen here has just got one electron, helium's got two. Uh, the next uh, period down has got two shells. Uh, so, lithium starts off with one, two electrons in its inner shell, and then a third one in its outer shell. And if you look at group one, as we go down uh, the group, uh, every single atom has all got one electron in its outer shell. All group two uh, elements have got two electrons in their outer shell. Group three have got three electrons. Group four have got four electrons. Group five have got one, two, three, four, five electrons in the outer shell. 6 have got 6, 7 have got 7, and then group 0, well, actually they've got a full outer shell, so sometimes I actually remember being told it's group 8. Yeah, there's actually a full outer shell, uh, so that makes group uh, 0, uh, the uh, noble gas is actually very unreactive. Now, the blue line that I've drawn here, everything on the left-hand side here are metals, and then everything to the right hand side are non-metals, including hydrogen up here, all these are non-metals. Now metals generally want to lose electrons. So as we go further down the group here, group one, this outer electron uh, that the metals are trying to lose gets further away from the nucleus, so it's actually easier to lose. So we find there's a trend that as you go down group one, actually the uh, metals get more and more reactive. Whereas the opposite happens with group 7. As we go up group 7, uh, to gain a full outer shell, uh, all group 7 want one extra electron uh, in the outer shell, so they'd like to gain an electron. And the easiest, uh, oh, fluorine actually is the most reactive because uh, it wants to put an electron right here that's very close to the nucleus, so uh, there's a lot of attraction uh, to put an electron here. Whereas with chlorine, uh, the chlorine atom wants to put an extra electron here that's a bit further away. And as we go down and we're adding more and more shells, where the extra electron is going to be actually gets further and further away from the nucleus. So the pulling effect of the nucleus effectively gets weaker and weaker. So as we go down group seven, we actually get weaker. Whereas like fluorine is the most Non uh, sorry, the most reactive non-metal. Uh, whereas group one, as we go down, we have to get more reactive. Okay, just a quick tour of the periodic table. Bye for now.